Yo, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is uh, Samuele Nocentini and uh, we are actually back at Carmina Performance. You can see nice NSX there in the back, uh, S4, but I actually got a new job uh, three weeks ago now and uh, yeah, very, very happy. I'm the office manager here and uh, yeah, super, super cool place. So you'll be seeing many, many more videos from here. And uh, remember, if you like these videos and you'd like to see more, please uh, consider subscribing. That really, really helps me a lot. And uh, smash that like button. It really, really means a lot. So yeah, without further ado, we'll hit the intro. In fact, uh, today we are uh, assembling an engine from a short block to long block and uh, a lot of uh, little tweaks and cool features that probably a lot of people don't know about the engine functions and uh, yeah check it out Okay, we are back at Carmina Performance with uh, uh, that's in Dr. Mitch. <laughs> Hi. And uh, today we are reassembling, uh, you were saying Mitch, from short block to long block. Is yep. that correct? Yeah, I assembled yeah. the short block previously, uh, assembled the rotating assembly, and so now we're putting the cylinder heads on, putting in the valve train, push rods, lifters, all of that fun stuff. And this is our V8 that goes on a Pantera? This is a, a 351. Windsor V8 uh, base, but it's been stroked to 427 cubic inches um, and is going into a Pantera. And we're using uh, Kometic multi layer head gaskets. So you hear the term MLS. Uh, MLS stands for multi layer steel. And if you look at the gasket, that's exactly what it is. Each one of these layers is a little thin sheet of steel with uh, Viton rubber impregnated into the layers so it seals properly. Um, these gaskets are really commonly used on turbocharged engines because they're much more resistant to detonation. They're very durable. Um, but you have to be careful to make sure that the surface of your engine block and of your cylinder heads is uh, at the right uh, surface preparation for this to seal properly. So it has to be a finer a finer surface than you would need for a fiber gasket. Perfect. These ducts here are for the coolant, so these gaskets are uh, symmetrical, so if you put them on fl flipped on the other side, you're going to get coolant here, but it's going to overheat uh, eventually. That's right. That's right. So the gaskets are usually marked which, with, with which direction they go. So this one says front here, so that goes to the front of the engine block. And you can see, if I remove the, the gasket, there are there are ports in the block for coolant here. Yeah. But the gasket is designed to block those ports on the front of the block and not on the rear to force the coolant to flow through the engine in a particular direction. Yeah, if you got that wrong, you would have overheating problems and it would be very difficult to diagnose. Okay, Mitch, so we're making some progress here. Making some good progress, yeah. So here's a little tip about uh, ARP head studs. When you're installing them, the first thing you do is, is clean out the threads in the block to make sure that they're absolutely free of any debris and dirt and blow the holes out. And then uh, when you're installing the studs, they need to go in hand tight. So they should be nice and easy to thread in. And you don't use any tools to tighten them in beyond that. Once they hit the bottom, that's it, you're done. And then you slide the uh, head gasket on. Since we're using ARP studs, we're also using the recommended Molly Lube. So you put that on the threads. You can see I've got it down here uh, on the threads and on the uh, surface of the cylinder head. You also want to coat the washers on both sides with this Molly lube so that you can get the correct torque settings. Uh, ARP lists all of the torque settings for their uh, bolts and studs by kit number and you can look at them online and get the correct torque specs for your setting. And they also recommend torque specs uh, to be used with their lubricant. So 
So very precise information. Extremely precise information. If you were to use oil instead of the, the molly lube, the torque setting would be different because there's a different amount of friction on the fastener depending on what type of lubricant you use. So, very carefully find the holes on the cylinder head. This can be tricky sometimes to line it up properly with the studs so that it drops down. Right. Now I'll lubricate all of those ones and get the nuts and washers on there and torque them to spec. Awesome. We discovered when we disassembled this engine that uh, the rocker arm geometry was not quite correct. Um, and so what we needed to correct that was an adjustable guide plate from comp cams in order to allow us to get the rocker tip to hit the center of the valve properly. So if you look here, I've got um, the original assembly in the first cylinder here. And if you bring the camera down to this side, you can see the roller rocker tip is, is not centered on the tip of the valve stem uh, in this case. So this is with a, a standard guide plate that's not adjustable. And um, this engine was running happily like this for several thousand kilometers apparently, but we didn't like the way that looked. So we decided to purchase the comp cams adjustable guide plates in order to correct that. So on the second cylinder here, I have installed the adjustable guide plate. You can see that the one rocker is not straight in line anymore with, uh, with the push rod. It is now aligned properly on the center of the valve. And if you come further along, I'll show you the difference between the standard guide plate, which is obviously fixed, and, and then, then we have and the, the adjustable, and the adjustable right? here, which allows us to move the rocker um, plate, or sorry, the guide plate around to put the push rod at the angle we need it to be at to and accurately uh, locate the, the rocker valve. on the valve. Yeah. yeah, very very interesting there, and very very cool to see the difference from stock and modified, and as well on the underneath what's going on in between the two. So that's for the correct opening and closing of the valves. All of the lifters are ready to go in. And as per the manufacturer's instructions, we soak them in, uh, in a break-in oil, which is high in zinc content, for two hours. And uh, what that does is it pre-lubricates them. It lets all of the air out of the inside passages and fills them with oil, so that on the first startup, uh, they will pump up with oil pressure quickly. So, We'll take them out of their beauty bath, <laughs> pop them in the hole here. Um, the, in this case, the, the rocker bridge is meant to be installed facing the valley. If you have certain types of cylinder heads, they sometimes are meant to face the cylinder head, but in this case, this is the way that they're meant to be oriented. Nice uh, special treatment these ones get, uh, Kanej. Yeah, oh yeah, the, only the best. <laughs> this is uh, all artesian mineral oil here, um, specially formulated on the north slopes of uh, uh, Milan. And <laughs> Milano, for those who speak Italian. <laughs> um, some people prefer the south slope motor oil, but uh, I like the north slope much better. It's less tannic, better for your engine. <laughs> And all of these have been cleaned out 